What team has the best shot to trade for Drew Holiday, Riv? I want to know your answer for this one. Um, I think I I threw a couple trade packages myself. I wanted to see to try to mix and match and see where I could go with this. And I, I came up with four. Four teams, the Clippers, the Mavericks, the Bucks, and the Nets. And I think out of those four, I think the Clippers and the Nets have the best chance. And I say that's because they have the best six mans on the team mm-hmm. in the league. They, the Nets, Spencer Dinwiddie, 20-point score off the bench. They could also throw in Jared Allen. They could throw in a draft pick. And then you got the Clippers who could throw in Lou Will and Pat Bev. You know, they got a, a guy, Lou Will, was also a 20-point score off the bench. So I think those two teams have the best chances right now. I don't agree with three of your teams because the Clippers, I feel like their cap space, they have way too much cap space tied into Kawhi and Paul George to try to trade for somebody making well, that's, that's where I 20 threw. mil. That's where but I, I think Lou Will is making like five mil. Eight. Eight mil? Yeah, you He's gotta, still making nothing. Well, Pat Bev makes 13. So if you put 13 plus eight, 21, what, Drew makes about 25. It's going to be hard to do. Yeah. The team I like the most is the Nets. I think they have the most assets to try to trade for Drew Holiday. They have Karis LeVert, who's averaging 19 points per game, who came off that season. They have Dinwiddie. They have Jared Allen. And they have the 19th pick in the draft. So I think Brooklyn makes the most sense because they have the most assets, and they need Drew Holiday because they were ranked 19th in defense last season. So bringing him in, they're going to jump in that area. But a team that people aren't talking about, are the Warriors. Mm. For Drew? Yeah. Think I want to hear it. this. I want to hear this. The Warriors can offer up Andrew Wiggins and the contracts match with Drew Holiday. If they can throw in Andrew Wiggins in a second overall pick, which that's very lucrative for the Pelicans if they want to rebuild to get that second overall pick, maybe potentially have the ability to get LaMelo or you Anthony would throw, Edwards. You, wait, wait. You would throw Andrew Wiggins in that second pick for Drew Holiday? That's a I big, think that's I a think lot. it's I think it's reasonable. You could throw the second pick and ask for the Pelicans' first round pick in return, but I think it's reasonable the Warriors would do it because you pair Clay Thompson and Drew, that may be one of the best defensive duels in the NBA, along with Draymond Green. That's gonna be really good. I'm gonna tell you why I I disagree to a sense because Clay Thompson. As a defender, he's a great, great on ball defender, great perimeter defender. I'm not knocking for that, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel comfortable walking into a game and based off Clay Thompson's frame, I'm not comfortable with him guarding LeBron consistently, guarding Kawhi consistently. He, I don't think he's big enough. If, I, if I'm looking for a guy, as if I'm the Warriors, I'm looking for a wing type guy, like a six, seven, six, eight guy that could defend. That's why I don't think Drew Holiday putting Drew Holiday in. The, I think it would help Steph. Sliding Clay to the three, I don't think would make sense in a defensive standpoint. I think the Nets would probably offer up the best thing, but I don't know who they're going to go with, Dinwiddie or Levert. I would say trade Dinwiddie. I would say Levert. You think so? I think Levert has a higher ceiling than Dinwiddie. He's more injury prone, and that's his biggest knock. But if you look at the numbers last year, they're like neck and neck. I mean, Holiday's averaging 19-5-7, and seven, Levert 19-4-4. Four and four. Holiday shot 35% from the three. Levert shot 36% from the three. Like, their numbers are very identical. So, I think Levert has a higher ceiling, so I'd probably go with him. But why not? Why can't they get both? I think they could get both for Drew. You think they can get Dinwiddie and Levert? Wow. I think they can get both for Drew because I think the Nets are desperate for a, for a third star mm. to pair with Durant and Kyrie. And I think Drew is that player. Like, Karis LeVert can score. He can play the point. But Drew's better than him. Yeah, and he's also a way better defender. Karis LeVert, when you think about defenders, his name doesn't come up. Dame has called Drew one of the best defenders. He actually called him the best perimeter defender in the should. NBA. He locked him up very bad. Yeah, I, getting both is – if they can, if the Pelicans can get both, that would be good for them in a sense because you get a, a guy who – you get two guys who can score and a guy that coming off the bench – I don't know if it would help the Nets if they lose both because the, t- the reason why their team is good because they have depth. So you're losing a guy to come off the bench and you're losing another guy. But if, you, if you're looking for that third star, I mean, they do have Jared Allen. They could throw in there. He's young. They have DeAndre Jordan. He, they could throw in there. I, I just, giving up both is crazy, though. I don't, I don't, I don't think know. they'd go. They'd want the I don't think the Nets would trade DeAndre Jordan mm-hmm. because Kyrie and Durant wanted him to go. 
That is with, true. With them to the Nets. That's why I'm not sure about DeAndre Jordan, Jared Allen, Jared Allen, Jared Allen, Jared, they, Allen. <laughs> Jared Allen. I like that was a tongue twister right there. I like Jared Allen, but I was like trying to mess with the trade mm-hmm. machine the other oh, day uh, on on the app. Yeah, on ESPN, I was trying to mess with the trade machine, and that trade doesn't work Dinwiddie. for Drew Holiday. Okay. Like Dinwiddie or Lavert, or even all three of them, they don't work for Drew Holiday because his salary contract? is too much. Drew Holiday is getting like twenty six million a year. Dinwiddie, I think, is like Karis and Dinwiddie are both are, are like at that ten million about a range year. Dinwiddie, Prince, and Allen, because Prince, Prince makes works about, better. Yeah. Prince works better. They'd have to probably they ha- they'd have to throw in Prince, Allen, and then somebody else. Mm. So they'd be giving a lot of depth regardless if they go with Dinwiddie and Lavert or Lavert and a combination of other players. Yeah, yeah. Prince has to go though. That's why I think I like the Golden State trade the most because you're just trading up Wiggins for Holiday straight up. And you talk about the Warriors needing a wing. Like, yeah, Andrew Wiggins is 6'8", but he's not a defender. Like, I'd rather have Drew Holiday at the two and then slide Clay to the three because Clay's 6'7". Well, how do, you, how, do you, how do you feel about this one? Instead of getting Drew, Andrew Wiggins in the second pick for Paul George. I don't think the Clippers will do that. No, I'm just saying hypothetically, like don't like I'm talking about like a wing like that. Like I'm not saying keep Wiggins because obviously he's never. I'm talking about get it like a wing like that. I don't think I don't think they would do that at all because the second pick and Wiggins is not worth a Paul George level player. Mm. Like I think the second pick. This is one of the this is one of the few drafts that they're really. It's a really unknown. It's a, it's a toss up, right? This draft is a toss up. So, last year, if we knew the second pick was going to be Zion or Ja, most likely it was going to be Ja, it would have made more sense because you knew you were getting an all-star level talent. With this draft, you're not really sure. You don't know what LaMelo's going to be. Wiseman, you don't know what he's going to be. Edwards, he's probably like the most sure thing. But even then, you don't know if he's just going to be a scorer and a non-defender. There's a lot of question marks. So, I think that's why I think for Drew Holiday it makes sense. This is one of the few drafts that... The second overall pick and the player is mm-hmm. kind of worth a Drew Holiday type of player. Right, right. Because Wiggins, he's kind of been a disappointment up to this point in his career. I could see it. I mean, it, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I could see it. I, I like the Nets better, but the Golden State trade wouldn't matter. But then that, that means you're bringing in a guy who's now your starting five consists of a bunch of 30 year olds. You know, Steph is 33, Clay is 31, Drew Holiday is 31. And then uh, Draymond's 31, so you, that's a pretty old lineup you got in there. They want to win now. Yeah. They want to win now. I mean, the Nets discussed a trade with the Pelicans before the trade deadline last year for Drew Holiday. Mm. So they were trying to get him last year. So they've had constant communication. That may help in the trade talks. But there's a lot of teams that have been calling. I'm, I know Denver's one of them. Indiana's one of them. So who do you think gets them? In the end, I like the Nets the most. It's probably going to have to be a three team trade mm-hmm. because they don't have the players to just straight up trade for Drew Holiday because the contracts don't match. They probably have to bring in another team, but I think the Nets make the make the most sense because the Pelicans can get the most assets and proven players from the Nets. I mean, Jared Allen, Lavert Dinwiddie, those three are proven players. I agree. Jared Allen, I don't like. I'm not sure on him because they already have Jackson Hayes and the favors. Mm-hmm. But Lavert and Dinwiddie make a lot of sense, especially Dinwiddie because they need a point guard. I know people love Lonzo, but yeah, we got like, no, we he's got inconsistent. It. So you're not really sure what you're getting with him. I agree. Yeah, I agree. 